If you're looking to join the ranks of EMS or the fire service, there's one test you simply can't avoid, the assessment center test. While the written exam is a key component, there's another test that's equally important, the oral exam. But how do you prepare for this daunting test? That's what we're here to help you with today. Welcome to Mastering the Art of the EMS and Fire Service Assessment Test Preparation. Let's get started. Study the job description for the position you are testing for so you can fully understand your role when answering questions. Identify which skills, attributes, duties, and responsibilities the employer is looking for by revisiting all of the study source materials that the testing company has sent you. While doing this, it is important you review and understand the roles of the positions above and below the position you are testing for. This will make you a better rounded candidate for the position and a better leader. Write practice scenarios based on the source materials. Your study guide will give you examples of what scenarios to expect, how many sections each question will be divided into, how long each portion will potentially be and how they word or formulate their questions. Practice writing your scenarios that way and practice answering their sample questions. Keep in mind that the oral interview section of the assessment test will have multiple sections or scenarios and that each scenario will have multiple questions or subsections that build up from the original question. For example, question 3 has three sections. A, B, and C. A indicates it will last 3 minutes. B, 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And C, will last 30 seconds. When you prepare practice scenarios, write them with a similar format in mind. In the beginning, give yourself extra time and as you master this skill, give yourself less and less time until you have reached the example timeframes depicted in your study guide. This will force you to prioritize what you will want to include or exclude from your responses. Practice potential scenarios out loud by yourself, with a friend or family member. This is arguably the most impactful thing you can do to prepare yourself. Record your answers so you can review and improve as you go along. Listen to how you sound. Do you sound confident and well-prepared? Or, do you sound nervous and unorganized? Would you trust you if you were one of the evaluators? Take timed practice tests using a countdown timer that you can see. During the actual test, you will be given a specific time to provide each answer. This could be 1 minute, 1 minute and 30 seconds, 2 minutes, 4 minutes or similar. Your study guide will give you a better idea of how many sections and much time to expect per section. Keep in mind you will also be allotted a short amount of time to prepare your answer. Practice providing your answer to a scenario while you watch the countdown on a screen. If you prepare for this, you won't be taken by surprise on the day of the test, you will be more relaxed and sound more confident in your answers. Practice being assertive while providing thorough, yet concise answers on each section. Don't dwell on any mistakes, instead concentrate on performing well on the next section or task. Evaluators are looking for the best candidate for the role and want to know they can trust your critical thinking skills, time management and decision making. Be prepared to give accurate responses to the questions being asked on the spot. For this, you will first need to have a thorough knowledge of the source study materials. Use your study time wisely to ensure you have enough time to cover all the source materials and have plenty of time to dedicate to practicing for all of the steps of the test. But studying isn't just about what you learn, it's also about when you learn it. Make a study plan and stick to it. Set aside specific times each day or week to study and make sure you're covering all the necessary topics. Having a well-defined study schedule will keep you accountable and on track. Plan ahead what days you will study independently, in a group, and what days you will rest or catch up. Organize all of the study source materials and plan ahead which source materials you will cover each day or week, and if you fall behind on your self-defined timeline, catch up. It is no secret that staying on track takes discipline. Let this be your advantage over other job candidates. Having a study partner or a study group can help keep each other accountable. Some choose the divide-and-conquer strategy when it comes to studying a large and complex study guide. While this can sometimes be helpful, it is important you read the entirety of the sources and feel confident you understand the material. Writing questions for a study group is a great way to apply this strategy. For example, each person in the group is assigned a section from which to come up with questions for the rest of the group to answer. Smaller groups seem to manage this approach much better. 
Group study can be particularly helpful for the oral exam since it involves communication and teamwork. In order to make sure you don't miss anything important within your answers, some people find it helpful to come up with an acronym they can quickly write down during the test preparation period. It would be wise for you to take time during your independent study time to come up with one. Practice quickly writing it down. A good rule of thumb would be to get it done in 30 seconds. With these tips and methods, you'll be well on your way to mastering the art of the EMS and fire service assessment test preparation. If you have any other tips, please leave us a comment. Thank you for joining us on Mastering the Art of the EMS and Fire Service Assessment Test Preparation.